Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk. And in this session, I am going to cover the JDBC based session replication. Okay, and for that, I am going to follow this Digitalk lab document, which is part of the 25 plus lab documents from Digitalk along with the 250 pages handbook. Okay, if you need all those documents, then they are available on bare minimum cost. You can write me on digitalk.fmw.gmail.com. Okay, and then we will share you the complete details of that course okay and i will show you the complete execution of jdbc based session replication okay what exactly is uh, session replication and what is in terms of jdbc based session replication okay and then how we can implement that okay so i will show you the complete end to end execution along with the demo how we can configure it okay so for that in this document there are six sections okay the first one is it will show you the existing domain architecture what is the domain architecture where we what exactly we need for this okay and then we will create a database table because this is a jdb session based session application so all the session data get stored in the database table right so we will create a table for that one and then we will create a data source and why data source because application access the data from database with the help of data source so if our session data is getting stored in the database in some table for that we need a data source so that our application can connect to database right and then we have to update our code right whatever the var file or the web application we have for that we have to update the bit our code and why because the code our application or our web web application will contact the database right for the uh, session data with the help of data source so what exactly we did we have to mention the details of data source and along with that the table details in our code so that it can contact the database and can access that table where we have the session data right after that we will develop, deploy the application and we will test if the session replication or the session failover is working or not okay so let me give you some idea on uh, the session and then about the failure and replication so what does it mean session replication so whenever we connect with a web application right whenever we access any uh, website over uh, the internet with the other browser okay it is connected with some of the backend server right so that means a session is created on the backend server okay and till the data is not saved in the system that means whatever the action that you have been taking on the session it generates certain kind of a data if that data is not stored in anywhere either in the database of the system or file system anywhere it get persist in the session right so if suppose that if uh, you are working on some website for example you are uh, on some e-commerce website where you have added certain kind of items in your shopping cart okay and whenever you access any as i said whenever you access any application over the web uh, web browser okay it get connected with the backend server for example i have a backend uh, you can see that i have a two many server running in my architecture right so whenever i will i am going to access my application which is deployed on the cluster with two many server so my first uh, whenever i will access the application either it will connect to many server one or either it will connect to many server two that is based on the algorithm or load balancing algorithm that we have configured for the front end web server or load balancer right so that means it will connect to any one of the managed server for example i have access a, a website for e-commerce portal which is connected to managed server one in the back end right and i am doing some uh, actions on the session i have added few items on the shopping cart okay and i'm i'm still searching for few more items to add in my shopping cart but suddenly in the back end the managed server one got crash where my session was connected so what will happen in that case with my session right so if backend managed server is disconnected due to any reasons either it is shut down or crashed okay so without giving any kind of a performance uh, kind of a impact to the end users those are accessing the website and have added the few items in the card the session will get replicated to the secondary server in the cluster right so we have a managed server 2 in the cluster so my session will be connected to now the managed server 2 <clears throat> which is called the failover but along with that failover of my session whatever the data that i have in my managed server one session it should replicate to managed server two right so there are different techniques for that one in memory session replication technique is there apart from that coherence is also there for the session replication and the third technique that i am going to explain in this lecture is 
जेडीबीसी बेस्ड सेशन रेप्लीकेशन सो फॉर इन मेमोरी सेशन रेप्लीकेशन एंड फॉर कोहरेंस बेस्ड सेशन रेप्लीकेशन आई विल क्रिएट अनदर लेक्चर अनदर सेशन फॉर दैट वन बट इन दिस वन आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू हाउ वी कैन इंप्लीमेंट दस this jdbc based session replication right so high level steps what i said is that we will uh, create a database table then we will create a data source in the web logic then we will update our code and then we will deploy the application and then we'll test the session failover right the first thing as i said we will create a table in the database right so for that we have a sql okay this is the name jdbc underscore replication underscore oracle dot sql and what is there inside is just a syntax to create a table with certain fields those are required to store the session data right so for that what we have to do we have to connect with the database and then we have to execute this script so that it can create the table in the database okay so let me show you for that one let me connect to my database first okay and then i will create a table okay so this script is on my d drive okay i will go to d drive and then i will connect to my database sql plus system and then password is weblogic123 right it is a syntax to connect the database user slash password and then the host on which your database is running then port of your database then slash the pdb name okay this is a database instance name this is a syntax to connect to your database okay and now because i am inside the d drive i have connected my sql plus session from the d drive so it will i can execute this particular script which is exist on my d drive okay so this is a script that is jdbc underscore application underscore oracle dot sql and only one syntax is there which is to create the table right so now you can say there is a table with the name wl underscore servlet under sessions is created right and let me show you that this is a table right and if i check the content of uh, this table select count star from this table okay so, so there is no data okay so when we will test our session replication at that time we will see what is that if we have a certain data inside of this table or not right so if data is generating at that time inside the table that means session replication data is getting generated inside the database table so now first step is completed where we have created the database table right and the table is empty right now we will create a data source right so for that i will uh, go to my Weblogic console and then inside services data source right so we are going to create a generic data source for that one so let me click on generic data source okay and i have to give a name for my data source okay so let me give it a um let me follow the document okay whatever the given is it's digit digit uh, okay what is what is that okay it's dizzy world ds right so let me give the same with these okay so it is there uh disabled ds right this is the name i have given to my database uh, database uh, this data source then let me get the jndi name same okay so one thing that you have to make sure is whatever the jndi name that you are specifying here the same jndi name you have to specify in the code as well okay because your application connect with the database or with the help of jndi so we have to define the jndi name in our application code our application will connect with the jndi with the help of this particular jndi name and then it will access the particular data source and then it will connect to the database so i have given the same name for uh, J, uh, data source and jndi name you can define any name for your data source but for jndi make sure this is the same name which we have defined in our code right so i'm taking the database as oracle because i have my oracle database is running the database driver i will select the default one and then for transactions i will select the default options whatever been selected there okay and then it is asking for the database name so my database name is orcl pdb okay and this is the database instance name so if you are um, if you are aware about the some concept of database so this is the uh, instance of the database name which you can get from the uh, status command as well of database uh, listener status command as well okay or either you can check in the tns listener uh, file okay or in the listener file of the database okay so now it is running on the local host port is 1521 and i am going to connect with the system user and then i will specify the password of my system user okay so let me enter the password 
okay and then i will click on next okay so now because we have entered the detail for our database so test whether we have given the right configuration correct configuration we can click on test configuration okay so we have given the correct configuration detail so the connection test is successful click on next and then target it to the cluster right because we would, we would like to target it to all the managed server which is running on the cluster so we have taken the target as cluster and then click on the finish okay so after that your data source will get created okay which will be targeted to your two managed servers right so that means both of your managed server whatever the application we are going to deploy in both of the managed server which is running on the cluster your application can access the database with the help of jndi name which we have defined in the data source right so now this part is also completed where we have configured the data source right and the next part what is this is to update the code to add the data source so now we have to update the code for that we have our demo file which is called shopping cart.war file so what we will do we will extract this file okay after extracting this file we will add the code which we need to add in the weblogic.xml file this is the main configuration file for your web application with respect to your weblogic configurations so what we will add in that we will add a session descriptor right where we will add persistent store type jdbc okay and store pool will define the dz world ds this is the jndi name that we have given in the data source and then this is the table name that we have created in the database so these are the session parameters that we have to define in the weblogic.xml file right so for that let me um, go to my uh, file first okay where it is c drive and then sample applications session replication right this is the uh, file right so what i will do is first i will extract this file so what is the syntax to extract a var file is jar okay i have added java path so let me uh, go back go to the complete path of my jdk it is uh, c java 8 and then bin then java then we sorry then jar we use jar to extract or create the archive files so we are going to extract so we have to use the xvf for that one and then we have the name of shopping cart okay so now this is extracted so you can see there the contents are extracted now so let me delete this file because i will create this one again after modifying the content of my weblogy.xml so these are the content of my uh, var file so what we need to do we have to go inside the web hyphen inf okay and then we have to update this weblogic.xml file okay so this is the content of this file so now what we need is we have to change this file okay and what exactly we need to add here is we need to add the content of this one session replication contents right so let me copy this one and after copying this one i will go back and then i will add it to this particular section okay so okay it is uh Mm -mm, coming in some different format so i have to make it in the proper format so okay so let me make it in the proper format so this is the right way and then this is the session descriptor okay and this is how it is added so now to make it in a proper readable form so i will make bit space so i will correct the indent for that one so we have added session descriptor with uh, type jd persistent store type as jdbc and then we have given the store pool as a jd uh, jndi name and then we have given the table name and then this is completed the configuration so now let me save this one okay so now this file is saved right so after save i have to create the var file again okay now to create the var file again for that one what i need to do is we have to use the same command okay but instead of x we have to use the c okay so c is used to create the archive file and x is used to extract the content of a var file okay so hyphen cvf and then shopping cart this is the file name and then what we are creating we are creating the shopping dot var file with the complete content that we have inside the current directory so i have give, i have to give the star okay so now this file is created and let me go back to my this directory okay again and i can see that this var file is created let me take it back to the one step back here so i will deploy it from here okay so now let me go back to my document okay so now see that we have uh, modified the code now what we need to do we have to deploy this application right so for deployment we will click on the deployment option and then we will follow the standard deployment technique click on install then go to our location where we have our uh, this particular sample file this is the shopping cart file then click on next 
deployed is an application we are going to deploy it on the cluster right and then select the default option whatever is there for the deployment and then click on the finish it will take some time for deployment based on the size of your warp file and the kind of a content you have there okay and after that uh, based on uh, the mode of your domain whether it is a development mode or in the production mode the application will come in the active state or if in production mode you have a domain then you have to start the application after the deployment right so now here because my domain is in development mode so it is in active state right so what i need to do is now first i will test the application okay so for that see this is application deployment is also completed right so now the next is the testing phase so first what i will do is i will do the testing of that one so let me access my application with the help of the direct url of first managed server okay so this is the direct url of my first managed server okay so because we haven't used any uh, load balancer yet and we need to see if the session replication is working or not so for that one as of now what we have done is we have accessed the application using the direct url of our first managed server and what is the direct url it is the ip address on which your managed server is running along with the colon and the port of your managed server and the context of your application similarly if you wanted to test the application for second managed server then you can access it with the help of 7004 okay so now what i have done is i have accessed the application with the help of direct url of my first managed server that means the session is connected with the managed server one so now what i will do i will add some item in my shopping cart okay and after that i will kill this server and then i will check the session is getting replicated on the second managed server or not okay so let me go to shopping and i add few more items okay go to shopping and then add items go to shopping and then add few more items back to home and then view shopping cart so now see these are the items that we have added in our shopping cart right so that means now we have a station which is connected to manage server one because we have used the direct url of manage server one right so now what we have to do is we have to shut down this particular manage server okay and after shutdown we will see the session is getting replicated to second server or not right and now because we have added few items so what we can validate it from the database as well so you, here you can see that the session the now the count it was zero now the count is one that means the session data is created inside the table right so now this is the first thing that we have observed that the session data is now storing in the database but now second what we have to check is that whether it is getting replicated to second server or not in the cluster so for that one what i really need to do we know that the session as of now is connected with the managed server one right so what i will do is i will go to my servers and control tab and then i will select the server one and then i will make it down okay why i am going to bring it down because my session as of now is connected with the managed server one because we have accessed the application using the direct url of managed server one right so now you can see that here this managed server is down right so now what i will do is i am going to access my application now with the help of direct url of second managed server which is 7004 why because now we have to check whether the session is really replicated to my second server or not and now you can see here that we have accessed the application our web application with the help of 7004 and we can able to see this data here i will go to home page right if i will go to back to uh, my home page and then if i will try to add few more items okay and then i can i will not observe the any problem with the session okay go to shopping and then add few more cards go to shopping and then view shopping cards. so these are the items that we have added initially when our session was created with managed server one and these are the certain items that we have added now so what happened is that our session data is get replicated uh, from managed server one to managed server two along with the failure of session when we brought down the managed server one right and our data is storing in the database as well okay so this is the uh, uh, the demo of how our session replication is work what is the concept of session replication and how it works okay uh, when we uh, when we deploy application in a cluster where we have a multiple managed servers and end user will not face any kind of a problem if any servers got down in the back end and then how the session is getting replicated how the session data is repli getting replicated so end user is not bothered about that one and they can work efficiently thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for the next video